Hi Year 11s, it's Mrs Harvey Taylor here and welcome to my video called Revision and Memory Techniques or Why Revising for Your GCSE Starts Down. Um, so in this video I'm going to take you through some um, different techniques that you can use to help you revise and I'm also going to explain to you why it's so important to revise. Um, all you really need is some paper and some pens. You do need different coloured pens, at least two different coloured pens, pe uh, preferably contrasting, so black and red or blue and black or um, red and green or something like that. It really doesn't matter. Um, but if you don't have pens and paper in front of you now, go and um, just pause the video and go and get yourself some um, paper and pens so that you can join in as we go. All right, you're not going to get anything like as much from the video if you don't um, have those things that you need now. So pause the video and go and get those bits, OK? OK, I'm going to assume that you are now ready to start. So let's just go over what it is that we're trying to do. You need to be able to use a range of revision strategies. That is so important. If you don't know how to revise, then you are not going to be able to um, revise effectively for GCSEs and you're not going to get good grades. But I think it's also helped to understand when you must revise and why you must revise um, and also to know what some of those different ways of revising are. Um, and if you can do all of those things, then you will be able to revise effectively for your GCSEs. Now, I think it's important to say at this stage that this really is focusing on revision, which is the first step, actually, which is just learning the knowledge. Um, and for a lot of your subjects, um, there'll be other things that you need to do. So once you have revised, you will then need to practice, particularly in those subjects where you have um, essays to write or kind of longer answers. So, you know, where you've got six mark, 12 mark questions um, in some subjects or even longer in other others. Um, revising the content is not going to be enough. You will need to practice those as well. Um, but for, for today, I'm going to focus on um, learning the, the knowledge, the information that you need to start with. So let's get started then. Revision. First thing I want you to do is just think about this question here at the top. How do you do it? And it might be that you're watching this video with a parent. It might be that you're watching it with a friend or you might be just watching it on your own. So you can pause the video and stop and have a little chat about what what you actually currently do and um, what you, um, you, know, you maybe would have done for year 10 exams if you'd had those. Um, or you can just write down a little list um, about what you currently do. All right. So pause the video and have a go at doing that now. 30 seconds or one minute is enough. OK, I'm going to assume that you've paused the video and you've had time to have that sort of um, little either chat with yourself or chat with somebody else. Um, and maybe you've come up with ideas like, um, well, I, I read through my notes, I read through my textbook, I read through my class book. Um, I like highlight stuff or uh, maybe um, you make flashcards um, or maybe you um, have come up with um, other strategies that you have. And we are all different, but essentially all revision boils down to these three things. So firstly, it might be transforming the text in some way, turning that information um, or knowledge that you have to remember um, into something else. Or it might be reducing the information, reduction, reducing the information to be remembered into smaller amounts or chunks over time. So you're not trying to remember your whole um, exercise book full of class notes, but you've kind of reduced that down into um, a page of notes or like your knowledge organiser or something. Um, and then the other thing um, is retrieval practice. And retrieval practice basically means that what it says here, giving our brains ways to practice um, uh, retrieving, that means finding stored information effectively. And if we're doing it effectively, then we're going to do it quickly and we're going to do it correctly. So that level of accuracy and the speed is going to help us to be successful in our exams. So you might be thinking, well, those are some of the things that I said earlier um, about how I revise. How do they fit into here? So maybe if you said, oh, well, I learn by quizzing myself um, or I know my teacher gives me lots of quizzes to help me revise. That's retrieval practice. So we're not testing you for testing's sake. And your mock exams is part of this retrieval practice here. And um, it's an opportunity for you to give your brain a chance to see what it is that it knows. Um, and also then it helps you to work out um, where the gaps are and that in turn helps you to revise more effectively because you know what you need to focus on. You may have said that you like flashcards. It's always a really popular um, technique. So flashcards are getting you to turn the information into something else by putting it onto a card. So they're transforming your learning and they're also getting you to reduce it because you can't fit everything on a flashcard. So you've got to kind of pick out the smaller amounts. 
Um, and, and there are many other different techniques as well. Some people like using graphics and pictures. Again, that would be transforming the information. Um, for me, I know for, um, just taking notes, I need to take notes. So that's about me um, reducing the information that I've got. So um, you need to remember these three techniques. I'm going to come back in and test you on those. Um, so uh, you need to um, kind of try and remember this. What can you do to help you remember this information? Well, you might already have your own suggestions, but the first thing that we could do is kind of use what the information is suggesting. So reduce the information rather than remember all of this. Maybe you're just going to remember the words in bold and that is reducing the information. Maybe you can both reduce the information and transform it into an acronym. An acronym is like an abbreviation um, or a mnemonic. You might um, hear it, you might have mnemonics that you use in different lessons or different subjects. So by that, we just take the first letter of each word or phrase and we use that to help us retrieve, to help us um, find that information again. So this is my example, RTR, and I would use RTR to help me remember these keywords that I need to um, reduce, and that's the reduction technique. I need to transform, that's the transformation technique, turning something into something else, and I need the other R is for retrieve, that's my retrieval practice, that's my quizzing. So RTR for me um, stands for um, those words there and that helps me remember all of that information and um, so I've taken that information and I've sort of tried to make it smaller into something more memorable and chunked it down. Okay, so this is our first opportunity to stop and check and see what we know. So um, I'm going to ask you to pause the video in a sec and I want you to write down um, or turn to the person next to you if you're doing it with someone um, and see if you can remember all those three key revision methods. If you wrote them down earlier, turn the sheet over um, just really give yourself an opportunity to test. You're only cheating yourself um, if you um, just copy down what you've already you know, written down and you, you're looking at your notes or something. Um, so pause the video now and see if you can write those three um, revision methods down. If you haven't paused the video because you're waiting for me to give you the answers, I'm only going to give you a hint. So remember, R that stand for. OK, hopefully you've paused the video and you've got your answers. So you should have written down reduction, transformation and retrieval practice, of course. OK, let's move on then. So next thing that you might be thinking is, well, why do I have to revise or I've got ages? Why do I have to start now? And what I'm going to do now is share with you some information about why it's so important um, that you revise in the first place and why it's so important um, that you start now. All right. Um, I know it can be very tempting to think, oh, well, um, you know, those exams in June um, are ages away. Um, I can leave it all until um, then. But but really, um, you can't. And this is why. All right. So. Here we've got um, something called the forgetting curve, and this was developed at the end of the 1800s uh, by a guy called Ebbinghaus. Um, and then um, scientists more recently have come back to it and proved that, you know, even though it was um, well over 100 years ago, this guy Ebbinghaus was right with what, what he had researched and found out about the way we learn. So I'm reading here, it says scientists have studied how we learn and they found that no matter how clever we are, over time, everyone will start to forget the information that they have learned. So retention here, we can see that means holding on to information. And that's what we've got going up this side of the graph. And then along this side, we've got time, how much you would remember over, over a week. All right, you've got to remember things for a lot longer, but we're just looking at a week for now. So you can see at the beginning of the week, um, people remember 100% of what they've been told, but very rapidly, we lose that information. So within a couple of days, we can only remember 20%. And by the end of the week, that's dipped to about 10%. And that explains why when you're in a lesson one week and you think, oh yeah, yeah, I know this, it all makes sense. And then you come back to it a week later and think, oh, I can't remember any of this. That's natural. That's what our brains do. We don't hold on to everything that we are told um, all the time. OK, so if you think about everything you've got to learn for your exams, actually, that's a real problem because that information is just going to disappear um, in everything that you've been taught by your teachers and everything that you've learned. If you don't do any revision, you're only going to remember 10 percent of it if you're lucky. All right. So what can you do? Well, 
To prevent the forgetting curve, we must return to the information by using those techniques from earlier. So remember that RTR, reduction, transformation, retrieval practice. Those techniques are going to help combat that forgetting curve. And each time we revise, the information sticks a bit better in our brain and it's moving from what's called our working memory, so our sort of short term memory, to our long term memory. And the more we revise, the more we remember because it, it's stored in this long term memory. And that's why um, you can remember things from a long, long time ago that might even seem quite sort of insignificant, not that important, because they're in our long term memory rather than in our working memory that, that essentially soon gets filled up, as we'll see later. So we've got the same graph here in terms of um, how much information we can remember and time going across. And you can see um, what happens to this kind of um, the level of retention, it drops off every time um, in, in these lines. But interestingly, this is each time you come back to your information and that curve um, gets less steep, not as severe, because each time um, this person is remembering more information. So the first time here you're taught something, you forget it. But if you come back to it with your revision, you'll remember it again. And the next time you won't... Um, forget it as quickly and then maybe you'll come back to it again and you'll give yourself a little quiz you'll do some retrieval practice and again then you can see that they're not forgetting as much information so actually here by day six this person can remember 60 percent of what they were told compared to before was when by day six they could remember less than 20 percent and then if you keep that process going, um, then you will remember even more. So testing, doing your mock exams is actually part of the revision process. It's helping you to see what it is that you do and don't know. And it's helping that information move from your working memory to your long term memory. OK, so that's why it's really important that we don't leave um, revision to the last minute because you just wouldn't have time to fit this whole process in if you don't start your revision until March or April or May, you know, because you've got so many different subjects that you need to revise for. So you've got to kind of space out your revision and you've got to plan it in using your revision timetable um, and start now so that you've got opportunities to keep coming back to different topics. OK, so what we're going to do now then is we're going to um, have a look at this information here um, and I'm really going to be getting you to um, sort of test yourself and, and try out some of these um, revision strategies. OK, so let's read through that information first. You can read it along with me um, or you can skip this bit and just read it yourself if you'd rather. The forgetting curve and how to revise. So I'm here now. As a researcher, Herman Ebbinghaus was interested in how people learnt and remembered information. He conducted a range of tests and in 1885 he produced his forgetting curve. The curve showed that people forgot information almost as soon as they had read it. In fact, people only remembered about 65% of what they had read. Ebbinghaus's forgetting curve shows that people need to revise something straight away and then at least three more times if they stood any chance of remembering it. All right, so that's what happened in 1885, quite a long time ago. But we're coming into the 21st century now. So now in the 21st century, research has proved that the majority of people could only hold three to seven pieces of information in their short term memory. That's what I've been calling our working memory. And just like Ebbinghaus had argued in 1885, people needed to revise something at least three more times in order for the information um, to move into their long term memory. In 2013, John Dolosky built on the information and found that in order to learn information, people had to use it. Highlighting and reading wasn't good enough. Dolosky stated that the best forms of revision were quizzes, returning to chunks of old topics and to make notes and diagrams. So just like I said earlier, just sitting with your books and reading through them and highlighting is not enough. And um, we only remember 65% of what we read if we're lucky. Um, and again, um, when researchers came back to this idea, um, they found that reading and highlighting was not good enough. So I want you to remember some of this information. What can you do? Hopefully you're starting to realise that some of those three revision methods from the beginning might be useful here. OK, um, so 
Uh, let's see what it is that we need to do. Let's have a quick check. Hide the information from earlier. Um, remember, you're only cheating yourself if you um, sort of cheat on the test. Can you remember what those three key revision methods were from earlier? And hopefully you've remembered that they are um, reduction technique, transformation technique um, and retrieving um, information. Now, if you've forgotten them and you haven't got it um, yet, that's OK. That's in the second time I've kind of given you a quick quiz on that. I've done a bit of retrieval practice with you. Um, and remember, that is part of the revision process itself. So it's natural. We know that from the forgetting curve. Um, that we quickly forget things. Let's just go back, yeah? We're going to quickly forget over time what we've learned. But by doing these little checks here, we're going to help uh, hopefully remember more and more each time. Um, so if you didn't remember them all, if you didn't get reduction or you didn't get transformation or you didn't get retrieval practice, that's OK. But hopefully realising that you didn't get it will help, help you um, remember it for next time because I'm going to quiz you on that one more time. So let's go back to this information that we've got here. We know um, that uh, highlighting and reading this information isn't going to be good enough. So we've either got to reduce this information or we've got to um, set ourselves a little quiz on this information, which is what I'm going to do, or you can transform this information. All right, so I want you to focus on reduction or transformation. Take two or three minutes now, keep that on the screen, pause the video when I say pause, and Think about how you can reduce or transform that information. Are you going to turn it into a mind map? Are you going to make notes? Um, are you going to pick out the key um, numbers in there and kind of turn them into sort of pictures or images or graphics in some way? Take a couple of minutes and have a go at um, either reducing or transforming that information in some way. All right, pause the video now. OK, so here's your retrieval practice part of your revision. Although this is a quiz, what I'm really not doing is testing you to make a judgment. I'm testing you as part of your revision process, as part of that retrieval practice, so that you know what it is that you do know um, and what it is that you don't know. OK, um, so it's part of that step in the revision process. You need to use those sentence stems that are in blue and you need to write your answers down in full now. OK, so again, don't cheat. Pause the video now um, and give yourself time to answer those questions. OK, here are your answers. So you can use that to start marking your work now. Ensure that you've written the correct answers in um, and then what you will have is a um, sort of reduced version of that text. Those sentence starters are giving you a reduced version um, of the original piece of text that we started with. Um, and again, just like I've been doing with the three key um, revision techniques, I'm going to come back to this information to test you. So make sure you've got that all down now. Ebbinghaus produced the forgetting curve in 1885. If you remember 65% of what we read, we can only hold three to seven pieces of information in our short term memory. So that's another reason, folks, why cramming and leaving it to the last minute doesn't work. Yes, you might remember something, but you won't possibly remember enough to give yourself the best chance of getting the highest grades. You need to revise something three times in order to remember it. And the best forms of revision are, according to the research, quizzing, making notes and creating diagrams. So. Let's think about our answer to that last question. Ebbinghaus, there he is, um, there, um, all those years ago, and also John Dzlowski um, and the researchers who came back to this more recently um, in the 21st century said that these are the best things that we can do. We can quiz, we can make notes, and we can create diagrams, and they are the best revision um, methods. So let's think how this fits in to the information that we've already got. We have seen those letters somewhere before. So see if you can make a connection now. 
Now, obviously, as well as this information here, in order to revise, we also need to make sure that we're avoiding distractions and we've got somewhere quiet, you know, a place to work and we've created a timetable. But those things kind of come before revision in the same way that doing practice questions comes after revision. Um, but we're just focusing here on sort of knowing the stuff, learning the content and revising the content. So hopefully you have realised that these things connect directly with those techniques that I um, suggested to you earlier. So your quizzing, that's your retrieval practice. Making notes is your way of reducing the information that you need to learn. And creating diagrams um, is transforming the information in some way. Now, it may be that you have a preference for a particular type. As I said earlier, I much prefer making notes. Making notes and quizzing um, are my sort of two preferred revision techniques. Um, but you might be a sort of um, more visual person, uh, you might be more artistic than me, um, and therefore you might prefer um, creating diagrams. That's fine, we're all different. But essentially, as long as you're doing these things, um, that's the main thing. So we're going to move on to learning some specific revision techniques. So um, these are going to link back to um, reduction and transformation and retrieval practice. Um, but I'm going to sort of show you and teach you um, how you can do that um, uh, a little bit better, really. OK, so. The first technique that we're going to use is something called red pen and black pen. And depending on how you use this, it can be both a reduction activity and it can be a transformation activity. All right. So we're still thinking about those different categories, different ways of revising. Essentially, all you're doing is copying information, but the different colours are helping you to um, transform the way you remember information. And this is to do with cognitive science. That's really um, science to do with how our brains work and how we learn and how we understand things. All right. And um, so that kind of visual trick of using different colours really does help. Um, and if you're sort of using a textbook, um, you might just note down the key words whilst you're doing this red pen and black pen. So that's going to help you to reduce the information um, further. Again, if you're doing it with a knowledge organiser that your teachers provided you with, for example, the information you've got is also reduced. Um, but also because you're testing yourself as you go, it is, um, you're also doing a little bit of retrieval practice as well, I guess, um, because you're sort of having to um, test yourself and see what you can remember. So let's have a go and see how this works. All right. You are going to study a section of a knowledge organiser, KO, that stands for knowledge organiser. You're going to study a section for a couple of minutes. I'm going to give you one, but if you've got um, your own knowledge organiser that a particular teacher's given you, then by all means use it. Then you're going to hide it. Then you're going to write down everything you can remember in one colour. Then you're going to look at your knowledge organiser again, and you're going to copy in everything that you forgot. All right. So then you'll have essentially um, what you started off with, your knowledge organiser, but you'll have it in two different colours, the bits that you know and the bits that you don't know. And then you repeat the process. That's step six. All right. So you study it again. But this time you focus on the bits that you forgot last time. And um, so if it was red that you added in all the bits that you forgot, you're really going to focus on the red bits this time. Then you're going to hide it. And in one colour, you're going to write down everything that you remember and look at your notes again and then copy down everything that you forgot. And hopefully what you'll see is as time goes on, you're remembering more and more, and you repeat that until you can remember the whole thing. But the, using different colored pens is getting you to focus on what you don't know each time a little bit more than what you do know. So let's have a go at that, all right? Here's an example of a knowledge organizer. We're just gonna focus on this tiny little bit um, from GCC history. If you've got your own knowledge organizer, that you want to use, um, then that's absolutely fine. So I'm going to ask you to pause the video whilst you study that, read it um, for two minutes. OK, so pause the video and do that now. You're just going to um, read through the information um, as many times as you can. All right, pause the video now. OK, so we've done our sort of studying. We're now going to hide it. All right, so I'm going to leave it on this slide. You're going to hide it. You're going to pick up one colour pen. It might be your black pen. Write down everything you can remember. All right, so pause the video now and write down everything that you can remember. All right, pause now. OK, so once you've written down everything that you can remember, um, you might know there might be some bits that you've definitely forgot. Let's look back 
Add in now everything that you forgot in a different colour pen. So hopefully you're doing this in your red pen or whatever different colour pen that you're using. But look at your knowledge organiser, look at what um, is on the screen and add in, in a different colour everything that you forgot last time. All right, you can pause the video whilst you do that. So now in front of you, you have got your notes and they contain all the information that was on that previous screen on that knowledge organiser. So now you're going to work through steps seven, eight, nine and ten. You're going to pause again um, and or study again first. Then you're going to um, uh, hide the information um, and uh, try and write it all out again. All right. Um, in one colour. Then um, you can look at your notes again and see if you can compare it back. So have another go at doing that. You're going to need to pause the video for maybe a good four or five minutes whilst you have a go at working through steps seven, eight, nine, ten and eleven there here. And then see if you actually remembered more the second time. Hopefully you did um, than you did the first time. All right, pause and have another go at that activity now. All right, let's, before we move on, just have a quick check. Can we remember those three key revision methods? So this is our third time coming back to it now. Let's see if we can remember all three. Um, and I've been trying, as we've been going through this video, to say those words as many times as I can and um, to help reinforce that information for you and put them in different colours, just like with the red pen, black pen, to help you remember them. Um, so stop now, write down those three um, key revision methods now. OK. Hopefully you've done that um, and you should have. Remember RTR, reduce, transform, retrieve. So that reduction technique, transformation technique and retrieval practice. And again, we're just that's another example of what we're doing right now. We're using retrieval practice to help see if we can remember that information. Um, and let's see what we can remember of this before. All right, so there's your sentence starters. Um, don't look back at your notes from before, but just pause the video here and see how many um, of those sentences you can complete um, or whether that information has moved from your working memory already um, and you know disappeared because actually you've been focusing on something else instead. All right, so pause the video and have a go at answering those questions. Right, there's your answers up on the screen. Don't give yourself too much of a hard time if you can't remember it. Um, what we often find is, you know, when we're focusing on one thing, um, we remember it really, really well. Um, and then when we focus on something else, say like we've then been thinking about the red pen, black pen activity and focusing on that history knowledge organiser, um, then you might have forgotten all of um, all of that already. And again, that's why it's important to space out your revision and swap between different subjects, um, because otherwise you kind of get a false sense of how well you know something. Um, you need to kind of mix it up a bit um, to help you remember everything. Thing. So you might want to give yourself a score out of five. Did you do better than before or did you do worse? Um, but again, we'll come back to this again as long as this, they start to go back up towards the end um, and you're sort of getting higher scores towards the end, then that's that's OK. So let's move on to our second revision technique. All right, we've looked at red pen, black pen. We're now going to look at what's called dual coding. Um, and this fits into the sort of reduction technique, but also more into transformation um, because it's getting us to use um, pictures and words. Um, now, dual coding is, is really popular at the moment. Um, it's a, a theory that gets us to use different parts of our brain. And this, to a certain extent, is why the red pen, uh, black pen technique works, because we're using um, words which deal with our verbal process processing part of our brain and we're also using um, our non-verbal part of our brain um, through the pictures um, and this gives our brains kind of almost sort of two ways it records the information in two different ways so that gives us double the opportunity to remember things really um, and make this connection between um, the pictures and the words that we see and all of these things help to build our knowledge so the pictures and the words that we create for um, whatever it is that we're trying to revise there are stimulus that's what sort of um, is our prompt. We use our senses of sight and hearing um, to help us remember this information. 
We store it in our working memory that has limited capacity. Remember, we can only remember three to seven pieces of information. Um, but by coming back to this revision, we move that knowledge into our long term memory. So essentially, it's about combining um, kind of our verbal and visual skills um, in order to sort of help our brains be successful. I just kind of liked that graphic. Um, it helps me to remember um, what dual coding is. So again, we can see this idea of you know pictures helping us to remember stuff. So let's go back to that history knowledge organizer um, from earlier. Sorry, let's go back to that history knowledge organizer from earlier. You can see how it's really simple, really straightforward pictures combined with text. So it's actually already using that um, dual coding technique. All right. Um, and hopefully you can start to see there's a bit of a connection between the words and the images. The images provide a clue or a, a hook, a way of helping us remember what it is that we need to know. So we know that we need to remember 1909. So we've got this little calendar um, symbol here to help us remember these dates going through. Then we've got the little person symbol to help us remember the people's names. Um, and then we've got this little question symbol, which is sort of reminding us, well, well what is it? What's the key thing? Um, and this is all about germs. So we've got a kind of a simple diagram of germs there. Um, so uh, these guys, they created the first magic bullet. We've got a little picture of a bullet. And then we've got Alexander Fleming, um, who identifies penicillin in his lab. So we've got it kind of growing there on its little Petri dish. Um, and then um, we've got it um, being trialled in 1941 with some success, then mass produced. So these to me look like little syringes and um, this helps me remember this idea of the trial, but also this kind of mass production because we've got almost like a little production line here, like creating um, the, um, the little kind of injections or little um, vials of um, medicine or whatever it is. So these pictures are helping connect to the information that I've got to remember. And you can do that with any kind of um, information that you've got that, to learn. Um, if that's you know if that's the sort of thing that helps you, and um, you can sort of draw little diagrams that help you link up um, to the words that you've got um, on your text that you're trying to remember. So let's have a little go at this in practice. I'm going to take an English example because. Um, everyone um, will be doing English. So here we can see some quotations from um, A Christmas Carol, and these are to do with Scrooge. And you know that you need to use your quotations um, in order to get um, the best grades that you can in English. So we've got some quotations here, tight fisted hand at the grindstone, and we've got a kind of little image of a, of a, of a fist to help us remember this idea of a tight, then um, Scrooge is tight fisted. Solitary as an oyster, we've got a picture of an oyster or solitary on its own, just one oyster there. Are there no prisons? We have um, a, a kind of cell or a, um, a jail door to help us remember this one. And then this idea of decreasing the surplus population, he wanted people to die, didn't he? Um, but he's using this very sort of financial language. So we've got a kind of mathematical representation of a graph. Um, this arrow reminding us of decrease and the little person remember, to remember, help us remember the word population. All right. So just like you would have done with your knowledge organizer, you kind of need to give yourself time to learn that. So study it, read it, write it down, whatever it is that you're going to do. All right. If you need to pause the video here and go through that a few times, then you can. Um, but we know that just reading and highlighting is not going to be enough. So then we use that dual coding um, to help prompt our thinking. All right. So when you're ready, you can move on to the next slide. If you need to pause the video, then you can. Now you've got those four pictures. Have a go using those four pictures to see if you can remember those quotations. All right, pause the video so that you've got those pictures in front of you um, and see if you can remember all the quotations. Once you've done that, make sure that you hide your notes. Let's have a go at doing it the other way. There's the quotations. Can you remember what the images were? Again, pause the video, see if you can do your kind of best, um, best doodle um, helping you to remember the images. And then once you've done that, can you remember them both? So pause the video again, see if you can now, for each of those quotations, you've got four quotations, can you remember the quotes 
and the pictures. Um, and maybe you can remember some, but not both. Um, but let's see how that goes. OK, so that's dual coding, essentially. All right. This idea of using diagrams or images, but they've got to be simple. Let's not start drawing like really detailed pictures, really simple pictures that are going to help us to remember certain pieces of information. And if you think, actually, yeah, that really helped me learn those quotations, then dual coding might be a technique that you want to use more um, in your other subjects. Right, let's go back to a bit of retrieval practice and um, see if you can have a go at answering those questions um, again for the last time. See if you can improve on your score. So pause the video and um, make sure you're not looking at your notes from earlier and just have another go at answering those key questions. And then when you're ready, you can check your answers and hopefully now um, you're getting five out of five. Um, so let's just pick up on some of these things. Remember, we only remember 65% of what we read. That's why things like using dual coding, using um, red pen, black pen, or other kind of reduction or transformation methods to help us learn will really help. We know that we can only remember three to seven pieces um, of information in our short term memory. So we've got to revise to help move it to our long term memory. And we've got to revise sooner rather than later to give us the opportunity to um, get lots of revision practice in in order to um, be able to store more in our long term memory. Um, and also because we've got to revise something at least three times in order to remember it. So we've got to start our revision now. And remember, the best three forms of revision are quizzing, making notes, creating diagrams, or in other words, retrieval practice, reduction, and transformation techniques. So hopefully you feel that you've had an opportunity to practice all those things as well. You've done a bit of reduction, you've done a bit of transformation, um, and you've done plenty of retrieval practice, actually. And we're going to finish off um, with one little last quiz. Um, so you can take your time with this. What are the three key revision methods? What is dual coding? What type of revision method is it? So is it reduction, transformation, or retrieval practice? What is red pen, black pen? So explain what it is. What type of revision method is it? Why did I keep testing you on the revision methods and or um, on Ebbinghaus's um, forgetting curve throughout this kind of little lesson, this little video? And then again, think, well, why am I quizzing you again now? How does that fit into what we've learned? So pause the video there um, and have a go at answering those questions. And then before I go, let's just pick up on some of these and I'm actually going to work backwards. So hopefully you realise that the reason why I'm quizzing you again now is that um, really that quizzing process is that retrieval practice. It's going to help move what you have learned from watching this video into your long term memory. Um, and that's why I kept testing you on the revision methods and Ebbinghaus's forgetting curve throughout this little video, um, because the more you kind of set yourself little quizzes like that, it doesn't need to be difficult, little quizzes like that, that's how how you do that retrieval practice um, and we've looked at those different methods you can go back on the video if you can't remember these um, in terms of how to explain them um, but the idea was is that these are getting you to practice both reduction and transformation um, which were two of the key three revision methods along with retrieval and practice which is our third I really hope you found this video useful um, and I hope it's given you the opportunity to practice those revisions and um, techniques. So now you can go back to what you've got to learn for your subjects and you've got a better idea of what it is that you might um, want to do um, or need to do um, in order to do the best you can. Um, and then just finally, I want to say, you know, best of luck. Um, don't get just stressed out with all of this. See your assertive mentor, see your head of house, see your teacher. Um, if you're sort of um, worried about anything, um, um, but the best thing to, that you can do if you are anxious is, you know, sit down and start revising and kind of um, try and try and be practical about it um, rather than get yourself into a panic. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.